Hey guys, it's me, Saren, back with another video. Today's hidden figure is Augusta Savage, born Augusta Christine Fells on February 29th, 1892, and died March 27th, 1962, and she was a Black American sculptor associated with the Harlem Renaissance. She was also a teacher who worked for equal rights for Black Americans in the arts. Augusta Christine Fells was born in Green Cove Springs, near Jacksonville, Florida, on February 29, 1892, to Edward Fells, a Methodist minister, and Cornelia Murphy. Augusta began making figures as a child, mostly small animals. Her father was a poor Methodist minister who strongly opposed his daughter's early interest in art. My father kicked me out four or five times a week, Savage once recalled, and almost whipped all the art out of me. She persevered, and the principal of her new high school in West Palm Beach, where her family relocated in 1915, encouraged her talent and allowed her to teach a clay modeling class. This began a lifelong commitment to teaching as well as to creating art. In 1907, Augusta Fells married John T. Moore. Her only child, Irene Connie Moore, was born the following year. John died shortly thereafter. In 1915, she married James Savage. She kept the name of Savage throughout her life. After their divorce in the early 1920s, Augusta Savage moved back to West Palm Beach. Savage continued to model clay and in 1919 was granted a booth at the Palm Beach County Fair where she was awarded a $25 prize and ribbon for most original exhibit. Following this success, she sought commissions for work in Jacksonville, Florida, before departing for New York City in 1921. <coughs> Excuse me. She arrived with a letter of recommendation from the Palm Beach County Fair official, George Graham Curry, for sculptor Solon Borglum at $4.60. Borglum declined to take her as a student, but encouraged her to apply to the Cooper Union in New York City, where she was admitted in October 1921. She was selected before 142 other men on the waiting list. Her talent and ability so impressed the Cooper Union Advisory Council that she was awarded additional funds for room and board when she lost the financial support of her job as an apartment caretaker. From 1921 through 1923, she studied under sculptor George Brewster. She completed the four-year degree course in three years. In 1923, Savage applied for a summer art program sponsored by the French government. Although being more than qualified, she was turned down by the International Judging Committee solely because she was black. Savage was deeply upset and questioned the committee, beginning the first of many public fights for equal rights in her life. The incident got press coverage on both sides of the Atlantic, and eventually, the sole supportive committee member invited her to study with him. After completing studies at Cooper Union, Savage worked in Manhattan steam laundries to support herself and her family. Her father had been paralyzed by a stroke and the family's home destroyed by a hurricane. They moved into her small West 137th Street apartment after these trials, and during this time, she obtained her first commission for a bust of W.E.B. Du Bois for the Harlem Library. Her outstanding sculpture brought more commissions, including one for a bust of Marcus Garvey. Her bust of Williams Pickens Sr., a key fa figure in the NAACP, earned praise for depicting a Black American in a more humane and neutral way, as opposed to the stereotypes of her time, as did many wor of her works. In 1925, Savage won a scholarship to the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Rome. This scholarship covered only tuition, and she was not able to raise money for travel and living expenses, thus she was unable to attend. In 1929, with pooled resources from the Urban League, Rosenwald Foundation, a Carnegie Foundation grant, and donations from friends and former teachers, Savage was finally able to travel to France to study when she was 37. While her studio was initially encouraging of her work, Savage later wrote that the masters were not in sympathy as they all have their own definite ideas and usually wish their pupils to follow their particular method. She began primarily working on her own in 1930. Knowledge of Savage's talent and struggles became widespread in the Black American community. Fundraising parties were held in Harlem and Greenwich Village, and Black American women's groups and teachers from Florida A&M all sent her money for studies abroad. She ended up touring France, Belgium, and Germany, researching sculpture in cathedrals and museums. 
Savage returned to the United States in 1931, energized from her studies in Europe. The Great Depression had almost started art sales in the United States, but she pushed on and in 1934 became the first Black American artist to be elected to the National Association of Women Painters and Sculptures. She then launched the Savage Studio of Arts and Crafts, located in a basement on West 143rd Street in Harlem. She opened her studio to anyone who wanted to paint, draw, or sculpt, and her many young students included the future nationally known artists Jacob Lawrence, Norman Lewis, and Gwendolyn Knight. Her school involved, evolved excuse me, into the Harlem Community Center. 1,500 people of all ages and abilities participated in her workshops, learning from her staff and showing work around New York City. Funds from the Works Progress Administration helped, but old struggles of discrimination were revived between Savage and WPA officials who objected to her having a leadership role. Savage received a commission from the 1939 New York World's Fair. She created Lift Every Voice and Sing, also known as The Harp, inspired by the song by James Weldon and Rosamund Johnson. The 16-foot tall plaster sculpture was the most popular and most photographed work at the fair. Small metal souvenir copies were sold, and many postcards of the piece were purchased. However, Savage did not have the funds to cast it in bronze or to move it and store it. Like other temporary installations, the sculpture was destroyed at the close of the fair. Savage opened two galleries whose shows were well attended and well reviewed, but few sales resulted and her galleries closed. Deeply depressed by the financial struggle, in the 1940s, Savage moved to a farmhouse in Sagartes, New York. While in Sagartes, she established close ties with her neighbors and welcomed family and friends from New York City to her rural home. Savage cultivated a garden and sold pigeons, chickens, and eggs, and the KB Products Corporation, the world's largest growers of mushrooms at that time, also employed Savage as a laboratory assistant in the company's cancer research facility. Herman K. Nost, director of the laboratory, encouraged Savage to pursue her artistic career and also provided her with art supplies. Her few neighbors said that she was always making something with her hands. After retiring from doing commission work, she taught art to children and also wrote children's stories in Sagartes. Savage died on March 26, 1962 in New York City. The Augusta Fell Savage Institute of Visual Arts, a Baltimore, Maryland public high school is named in her honor. And in 2001, her home and studio in Sagartes, New York were listed on the New York State and National Register of Historic Places as the Augusta Savage House and Studio. It is the most significant surviving site associated with the production life of the artist, teacher, and activist. In 2007, the city of Green Cove Springs, Florida, nominated her to the Florida Artist Hall of Fame. She was inducted in the spring of 2008. Today, at the actual location of her birth, there is a community center named in her honor. A biography of Augusta Savage intended for younger readers has been written by Alan Schroeder entitled In Her Hands, the story of sculptor Augusta Savage. The papers of Augusta Savage are also available at the Schomburg Center for Research and Black Culture at the New York Public Library. Augusta Savage, in figure. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. There will be links in the description box. Food for thought as always. See you guys next time. Peace.